Well, welcome back. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, we're returning to our discussion of the correlation coefficient and the slope as seismic attributes. Uh, remember that uh, Bohorich and Farmer, for example, um, make good use of the cross correlation to, they use inline and cross line uh, trace correlations to come up with a coherency volume. And you can see that they've uh, nicely outlined some channeling here on a chronostratigraphic uh, surface in the seismic volume. Uh, we have some other uh, examples here, semblance-based, eigenstructure, gradient tensor-based uh, uh, estimations. And you, you can see they do, to, to a varying degree, do a good, a good job of pulling out uh, features in the seismic data uh, that you might not otherwise see. Although this is a pretty good seismic data set, you can see some channeling over here. And uh, the techniques that have been used have cer certainly enhanced the um, uh, appearance of the channels in this, in this data set. Uh, down here we have an approach proposed by Gao in uh, 2006. Here we have the uh, input seismic. You can see some faults. You can see some structure. We can see some stratigraphic variability and so on. Gao uses the uh, absolute value of the slope of the regression line correlation between a sine wave, in this case, and the seismic data, uh, sample by sample, uh, just kind of rolling that uh, sine wave down through the data, calculating the uh, slope sample by sample. And you can see that this approach does a, a nice job of enhancing structural discontinuity in the data. Uh, we can see a fault which is not continuous, it may do some branching in the shallower part. Uh, your first glimpse, you know, you, you, you probably would put two faults through there. You see it could be a little bit more complicated. Over here we have an additional fault, which over here looks like it goes all the way through over here, perhaps questionable. Uh, perhaps this is not really an offset, but just a full. So the uh, uh, slope does a, a good job of enhancing uh, structural details uh, through time. And uh, so what I had asked you to think about uh, last time was whether or not there would be a relationship, or is, is there a, re a relationship between the uh, correlation coefficient and the slope? So let's come back to that and uh, take a look at the relationships that we have for the slope, covariance over the variance, the uh, correlation coefficient, the uh, covariance over the square root of the product of the variances, and here we are using the waveform w as a reference uh, function, as our independent variable. Uh, you, you know, re recall what we're doing here is we're sliding this waveform down through the seismic data, you know, a, a seismic trace. We're calculating the uh, correlation coefficient. We're calculating the uh, slope and intercept and the correlation coefficient. And so this is, this is a, uh, a reference function. We're considering that to be our independent variable. And when you look at it, we aren't really changing it. At each point where we make a, where we calculate a regression line, we aren't making any changes in the number of samples in, in the uh, waveform. So it's a variance and standard deviation are gonna be constant. While the signal variance and standard deviation at each step uh, is going to, to vary as we go from the top to the bottom of the, the trace. So if we take that into consideration, this term becomes a constant. And over here, we take that constant uh, out in, in front. We just, we just have the uh, sum of the square differences in the waveform from its mean, uh, this same constant here. And the next thing that we're going to think about is whether or not, you know, how these relationships are going to change if we have a zero mean um, signal and waveform. And if we do have a zero mean signal and waveform, these 
relationships become simplified. We have uh, the slope is just the sum of the products of the signal amplitudes times the waveform amplitudes over the window uh, divided by the constant. And um, over here, we just have the, uh, again, the same numerator, but the denominator is different. We have the square root of C times the square root of the sum of the uh, square amplitudes of the signal, which we don't have over here. So a uh, significant difference, main difference is this term that we, we have. And just, just as a reminder, what we're doing, we're, we're considering a comparison of you know B and uh, R for wavelets one and two. We've got the two wavelets down here. And all we're doing in the case of wavelet one, for example, is we're taking this wavelet, we're moving it through the signal, and we're calculating the slope and the intercept and the correlation coefficient sample by sample along the um, along the length of the uh, signal. Calculate R. Calculate B. Again, this is a sample by sample calculation. So if we look at the results, and one of the questions that we might have is, is the slope going to be a good proxy? for the coalition, correlation coefficient. And we've seen that the um, correlation coefficient has an additional term. It has the square root of the sum of the squared amplitudes here in the uh, denominator. So we would expect to have some difference here between the, uh, the in other words, the uh, uh, correlation coefficient is not going to be the same as the, um, as, as the slope. So we, we do have this uh, variance term in here. And uh, we can see that, interestingly, that, or at perhaps as we would expect, we'd see these two terms converge to zero when the, uh, uh, or the dispersion and values or in estimates of R would converge to zero here as the uh, slope and the correlation coefficient uh, converge on zero. Uh, same over here, correlation of uh, wavelet two, the uh, correlation between the uh, uh, correlation coefficient and the slope for wavelet two and wavelet one, we see pretty much the same thing. Uh, we see quite a bit of dispersion in the estimates of R for any particular value of the slope. So if we fit a straight line to these two for wavelet one and wavelet two, waveform one, waveform two, we get good correlations, uh, about 95% uh, here, about 92% there. Uh, however, we do see as an estimator, the B as an estimator of R uh, is really, you know, there's quite a bit of error there. If we just look here for a slope of minus one, we are probably going to get values from about uh, minus 0.7 to 0.3. Um, so there's quite a bit of, um, as it, it's not a very good estimator. Although we do have a good regression line fit, we have a good correlation there. The um, using B as an estimate of R is going to have a lot of inherent uh, error. We see that in both of these plots over here, quite a bit of scatter uh, for any particular value of the uh, of the uh, slope. Okay, so what are we doing here? Uh, you know. Could the slope be a proxy for R? I think our answer is not a very good one. Uh, but let's take a look at what we're doing here. Uh, also in terms of the absolute value of the, uh, of the waveform correlation. Uh, remember that the correlation tells us how well our target um, waveform, in this case, you know, waveform one, correlates with the signal sample to sample along the, uh, along the trace. And uh, we're interested in high correlations. So, you know, if we have high correlations, we know that the response that we see in the signal is related to that of the waveform. And if we have a particular reservoir interval or some other feature, stratigraphic feature that we're looking for, we're probably going to be interested in these uh, high positive correlation areas. And so, as we mentioned before, we'd probably want to window the seismic data uh, using a window that kind of straddle the zone of interest. Uh, it, you know, you, you're, you're going to come up with a variety of different conclusions. If you look vertically up and down the trace, 
you know where your reservoir interval is, so you, you know, it would make sense to focus on that. Taking the absolute value of the waveform uh, correlation, we get this series up here. And what, I, what I'd be looking for here would be some similarity between the absolute value of the correlation and features in, in the original signal. And what I've highlighted here, I just kind of go from a peak to, well, we're coming up on the limb of a, uh, of a high correlation, absolute value of correlation. Here we've got peak to almost a trough. Here a small peak to a small peak. Uh, a large peak to a large peak. Uh, a large peak to a kind of a zero. So we don't really see correlations in terms of amplitude and phase between the absolute value of the correlation and features in the um, signal waveform. The uh, correlation and absolute value bear little similarity in amplitude and phase relationships in the signal. So they don't really serve as a good substitute for the signal in terms of, you know, if you were thinking in terms of stratigraphic uh, uh, features that you would want to correlate from trace to trace using the absolute value of the correlation, for example. Uh, here we have the absolute value of the slope, and, uh, and we'd have the same question. You know, do we see features in the signal? Can we trace those figure, uh, features in the signal, amplitude or phase? Uh, from the signal to the absolute value of the slope. And again, we don't really see a direct relationship between the two. So slope, as we showed in the uh, plot of uh, R versus B, you know, slope really doesn't tend to be a very good proxy for um, correlation coefficient. And uh, this is for waveform 1. This is for waveform 2. Waveform 2 is a cosine wave in this case instead of a sine. but we're taking the um, uh, cosine wave in this case, and we're correlating it, uh, cross-correlating it with the signal, uh, sample by sample from the, the beginning to the end of the trace, and then looking at the uh, values of the slope uh, that we see down here, and then we're taking the absolute value of the slope. I've done a little bit of scaling here just to plot things up. But we come up with the same, um, same conclusion that features in the, at least in terms of amplitude and phase that we see in the signal, we do not see in the uh, absolute value of the slope. So in that sense, we're really not, we don't have a feature, the, the absolute value of the slope, that is going to translate from characteristics that we see in the signal into uh, similar characteristics within the uh, absolute value of the slope. And then I've just highlighted some, you know, some peaks in, in the uh, signal, just kind of compared them to what we see in the uh, absolute value of the, of the slope. Now one of the things that you can see right away is that the absolute value of the slope, uh, the absolute value of the correlation, and uh, either one, uh, produce higher frequency because we've taken the absolute value, we've flipped uh, the, the troughs into peaks, and so we're kind of going back and forth from uh, <clears throat> peak to trough to peak to trough to peak to trough uh, over a shorter shorter period of time than we do in the um, uh, in the uh, calculated slopes down here or in the signal. So we expect to see some frequency enhance enhancement, and uh, indeed we do. So here we have the uh, spectrum and this red line here of the absolute value of the slope for signal W1 here for the absolute value of the um, uh, signal compared to waveform 2. And then this would be the uh, spectrum of the signal. So you can see that we've got some higher frequency response out here in the absolute value than we than we do in the uh, signal spectrum. But remember, this the features that we see here, the uh, higher frequency features that we do see here, are really not uh, conveying information about the stratigraphy. So 
So as we come over here and we look at this comparison, we've got the input signal over here. We've got the uh, absolute value of the slope uh, plotted up down here. We it does a, a very nice job of highlighting some structural features in the uh, in the data. It enhances high frequency content. This is certainly higher frequency than this, uh, but it just appears to be unrelated to the uh, signal in terms of uh, amplitude and phase relationships. And so one would look at this and have to have some questions about uh, making any stratigraphic interpretation, the lateral stratigraphic interpretation. There's no real direct one-to-one -one correspondence between what we see up here and something that we can, you know, you, using the uh, convolutional uh, back to impedances in the, in the, in the subsurface. Uh, we, we would have a difficult time uh, doing that. So what conclusions can we draw? Well, uh, the formula for the correlation coefficient is similar to that for the slope, but it contains an additional term, the square root of the windowed sum of the uh, squared amplitudes. Um, the slope could be used as a proxy for the correlation coefficient, but you know, you'd have to put up with that. You'd, you'd have to ask yourself why you're doing it. Uh, for uh, the absolute value uh, of the uh, correlations and the slopes could certainly provide you a better a higher degree of structural uh, resolution, uh, but might not be very good for stratigraphic correlations. Um, the amplitude spectra, as we saw, they do enhance the high frequency content, but again, you, you'd have to look at that with some guarded optimism. You've got higher frequencies, uh, but does that really translate into resolution, increased resolution of what? You know, are we seeing increased resolution of uh, uh, velocity and density contrast within in the uh, uh, subsurface? Probably not. We are seeing uh, laterally uh, across the line. We're 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 seeing enhanced uh, structural discontinuities. But uh, stratigraphic stratigraphically, this this I think is a, is a question to that that one should have uh, in terms of you know the interpretation, the enhancement of higher frequency. So we've got this kind of obvious use of either the absolute value of the correlation coefficient or the, the slope uh, for structural purposes. The correlation coefficient, as we saw Bohorich and Farmer, we can correlate with uh, stratigraphic features that give lateral variations in seismic uh, response. and. These are best applied on a chronostratigraphic surface. So you, you know, ideally you'd have your volume flattened on a chronostratigraphic surface. Uh, the correlation coefficient does provide a statistical estimate of similarity between uh, response and target waveforms, uh, uh, as well as trace, trace similarity or difference. Uh, I don't think we find the same level of usefulness, utility, in the uh, absolute value of the slope or the absolute value of the correlation coefficient in terms of uh, amplitude and phase relationships that might be related to stratigraphic variability. So uh, what I'd like for you to do for the next time would be to consider how you could enhance frequency content and preserve uh, relationships in the um, relationships to the, um, to the signal. Thanks for uh, joining us, and uh, hope you continue to do well. Uh, see you next time.